Okay, so it is the turn of the budget Italians. We had the budget Spanish, and so it is only right that we come with the budget Italians. We have this one, which has the worst of the worst, a screw top, but it is from Puglia. And so we will forgive it because generally I love wines from Puglia. We have another wine from Puglia, which was recommended to me by uh, people in Majestic. These are all wines from Majestic. Again, I don't have any special affiliation with Majestic. They do not have any affiliation with me either. However, I do like the fact that Majestic managed to survive and flourish with the last crisis. And we are now in a lockdown and a crisis. And so I am starting with Majestic Wines again. We will move on, don't worry. But uh, these are budgets. And I wanted to start with budget because I think in general, the wine, uh, not the wine industry, but uh, people who surround the wine industry tend to be a little bit snobby. And I do get that, but wine should not be about snobbery. I have been drinking wine for a long time. I've been going to the very best vineyards and worst vineyards because I love wine. I've been drinking very expensive wine and very cheap wine for a long time. And I have been presenting very cheap and very expensive wines to a lot of people and going to tastings with people like friends who um, like to try and shake it up. And it is amazing. Um, at the end of the day, everybody likes a good wine. It doesn't matter how complex or how simple your palate is. If you give people an amazing wine, they will go, wow, this is an amazing wine. And it's, it's, it, there's, <laughs> there's nothing incredible about that. It's like if you give somebody an amazing steak or anything amazing, they will go, wow, this is an amazing, etc. So, um, it would be nice if we can break down these barriers and not have wine being as snooty as it is. And uh, you know, with with this uh, tattoo-like label, you'd think that they're trying to do that and they manage. But we have uh, three budget Italian wines. We're gonna do some very nice Italian wines. Like we're gonna do some very nice Spanish and French wines as well. But we start with budget because it is important to break down those barriers. Now, what I love about this Pugliese, Pugliese, so Italy is obviously a very big country and it is very uh, varying country in terms of its, its produce of wine and its personality. But I must confess, I like wines that are from Tuscany down. I, I, I like big wines. You will find this out. I like wines that light will not pass through. And so they tend to be Tuscany down, Nero de Avolas, Puglias, and this one, despite its weird bottle, is just an amazing wine. And you can see <laughs> that I don't have much left of this wine, but look at it. I mean, it is just astonishing. Now this one has been in the fridge for a few days because I missed a week of recording. It's a 2018, it's a Primitivo, it's from Puglia, and it is absolutely amazing. I mean, it's a big wine, don't get me wrong. You have this with a pizza and you will wake up at three o'clock in the morning with massive acid problems if you're off uh, you know, a tendency to suffer from those kind of things, but it is, you will have enjoyed the process. This one's, I mean, it's slightly sherified because it's been in the fridge for a few days, but it's just, I mean, 2018 Primitivo, it's just an amazing wine. It's 13 and a half percent volume. And I can drink that all day long. Now, the other surprise that I had is this one from Araldica, which is a 14.5% wine. Now, bear in mind, I don't always trust the alcohol levels, especially from Southern Europe. Um, I honestly think that someone once told me when I went to a vineyard in Southern Europe, 
that they put the wines uh, before the denomination people come in the sun. You know, they, they get the rickety old barrel that has uh, the most permeability and they put it in the sun before the, I, I don't know if it's true or not, or it's a, yeah, an old wives' tale. But they're big on alcohol, but I like that. And this, Araldica, is another amazing find. Their budget Italian reds, they're very big. They're very brisket, they're very, uh, you know, beef. Uh, they're very strong pork, they're very paprika, they're very, they're, they're just big wines, but they're lovely. That has not survived well in the fridge, but it is amazing. So these two wines are two of my favorite wines from Majestic. They are everyday drinkers. They're not special wines, but you could drink them all day long. And they're not that expensive. You can typically get them for about six or seven pounds a bottle. Without an offer, they are eight, nine, ten pounds a bottle. But we get to this one. This one was brought in the Majestic case. It has a dreaded screw top. Which is just like, but we're going to see. Now, I automatically have a problem with this beyond the screw top, and that is the fact that it says it's only 12%. Now, a Pugliese that's only, a wine from Puglia that is only 12%, Puglia has a lot of sun. It's not a good start. Iniziamo male. But I don't judge yet. This is just not a good wine. I mean, it came in the concierge. I, uh, I will imagine there are two. I don't know if I would even, I may use it f for a, a stew. But this is plonk. These two are stonkers. Budget stonkers, which is the best type of stonker.